Question 4 was as follows. That is A. In a group of 60 football fans, 37 support team A, 28 support team B, and 29 support team C. 2 support team A and team C only. 5 support team B and team C only. 7 support team A and team B only. 10 support all the 3 teams. Illustrate this information in the Venn diagram. So what you need to do is you need to draw the Venn diagram like this one. Okay, the one I've drawn there. Once you have drawn a Venn diagram like this one, you even name these circles, the inner circles inside, A, B, and C. So the, these letters are the names of the sets. Okay? Then let's now put the information given in this Venn uh, diagram. First of all, you need to start on the uh, middle point. You look for the information that is on the intersection of uh, A, intersection B, and intersection C. You find the information that stands for A, intersection B, intersection C. And that information is the one which is said uh, support all the three teams. So the number of supporters that supports all the three teams are uh, easy, 10. So I'm going to write 10 there on the uh, intersection of A, B, A, intersection B, intersection C. That's why I've written 10. Okay, once we've done that, now we can fill in this intersection section, the remaining intersection uh, intersection sets. Okay, so I've got, now let's go there on top where it said to support team A and team C only. So we're going to put two uh, on the intersection of A and C, which is here. So I'm going to write two here, where I've written two. Five where... Uh, Five supporters support team B and C, so we're going to write where there is intersection B intersection C, which is here. Okay, I hope you are following. If you are confused, you can ask in the comment section. I will be glad to explain more. Then we go to seven support team A and team B only. So we're going to put seven where on this section where there is A intersection B only, so which is here. Okay. Once we have done this, that means we have used the info, the partial of the information. Um, now, when we go to the question or the statement, it, it reads as follows: In a diagram, sixty football fans, sub, uh, 60, in a group of sixty football fans, thirty-seven support team A. So, meaning the total number of fans that support team. A is 37. Now let's go come to our diagram here. Let's calculate, let's count the number of fans which are in this in the circle A. Okay? So the fans which are in the circle A, the number of fans which are in circle A are 7, 10, and 2. 7, 10, and 2. So when you add these numbers, uh, they will give us 19. So when you subtract 19 from 37, the difference will be 18. Okay? So 18 will be in that circle. Just in circle A. It is not in any intersection. It will just be these 18 fans, they only support team A. Okay? They only support team A. Okay? Now we can go further now in the same statement. Right? So we said 37 support team A, 28 support team B. So now let's come to team to set B or team B. There we'll see that we have got three numbers, which is 7, 10, and 5. Okay? So this is, these are the three numbers of fans that support more than uh, one team. Okay, so when you add that, we are going to have 7 plus 10 will give us 17. 17 plus 5 will give us 22. Now... 28 minus 22 give us 6. So there we're going to have 6. Now when you add 7 plus 6 plus 10 plus 5, that the total will be 28. And that is the total uh, number of fans who support team B. Okay? 
it doesn't matter whether they support many teams, but it's just the, we are just looking at the number of fans that support team B. That's why they are in that circle, which is B. Okay, come to C. Uh, in, in the statement, and it continues and it says, and 29 supporters, 29 support team C, and 29 support team C. So meaning the total fans of team C is 29. Now, as you can see, in in the set C, we have got 2, 10, and 5. 2, 10, and 5. So we need to find the difference of the sum of these three numbers and 29, which is the total. So when you add that, it's going to give us 17. 17 minus, okay, 29 minus 17 will give us 12. Okay? Now, that way, we have fully illustrated the information in the Venn diagram, which is given above. Okay? If there was any statement like uh, 6 or 7 do not support any team, then we could have put it in the uh, outside the circles, but inside the rectangle. Outside the circles, but inside the rectangle. Okay. If there are information like uh, a certain number did not support any team, then we could have put that in the rectangle and not inside the circles. Okay. If you have got questions, like I said earlier on, you can ask in the comment section. Now let's go to question two. Okay. That is for A2, which is find a number of B complement, number of fans of B complement. So we are looking at fans, the number of fans which are not in set B. The number of fans which are not in set B. Now we can see that set B consists of 7, 10, 5, and 6. So any number that is outside that set B circle, that means they are complement. So in this case, we have got 18, it's not inside D, the circle B, and 2, which is going to be 18 plus 2, then plus 12. So these are the three numbers that are not in the set B. So when you add that, 18 plus 2 give us 20, 20 plus 12 will give us 32. So 32 is the number of fans who, are, who do not support team B or who are complement of team B. Okay, now let's go to question B. Question B, I've got a number of fans which a uh, number of fans which are not a intersection B complement. So we are saying a uh, number of fans that do not support team A or team B. Number of fans who don't support uh, both teams, who do not support both teams A and B, who do not support both teams A and B. But if a fan supports A or B, but not both, then that fan will be counted. We just don't want to count those fans that support two teams, which are A and B. So in this case, we're talking about 7 and 10. Okay, A intersection B, that is 7 and 10. Now, when we say complement, we want those who do not support, who are not uh, members of intersection A and B, which is, we're going to exclude 7 and 10. We're going to exclude 7 and 10. So that means we're going to find the sum of 18, 2, 12, 5, and 6. Okay. So the sum of that is, um, is the answer for that question. So in this case, we can also do uh, like this. We just go get the total number of fans, which is 60. I'm going to use a different meso method, uh, which is different from the one I used in the question A, so that you can also understand the other method that you can use. And remember, the method I'm going to use here can also be used in A, and also in B or even in C. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the total number of fans, then which is 60. Then I'm going to subtract the the total, the number uh, which is on intersection, the total of the numbers on the intersection of A and B, which is 7 and 10. So I'm going to say minus 
10 plus 7. Okay, so before I go any further, I'm going to find the sum of 10 plus 7, which is 17. Then I'm going to find the difference of 60 and 17, which is 43. So the number of funds that are not found in A intersection B is 43. So 43 is the correct answer there. We come to C. C, which is saying, find the number of funds who are not A union B. So when you say A union B complement, you want to find the number of funds who do not belong in A union B. And when you look at that, that means uh, that statement is asking us that we exclude any fund that is found in set A or set B. Any fund that is found in set A or set B. Whether it supports both, uh, you supports two teams or three teams or whatever, but as long as it's in set A or set B, we shouldn't count that fine. So in this case, that means we are going to remain with only 12. So 12 is the number of funds that are not found in A union B complement. Okay, so those are the answers examiners expected. Let's go to question 4B. Okay, so question 4B was as follows. Given that the determinant of, of the matrix A, which is matrix A, is equal to 2x minus 1, 1, 4, negative 2, is negative 10. Find the value of x to the inverse of matrix A. So let's start with the 1, the value of x. So what we need to do for us to find the value of x here is we're going to use um, the formula of finding a determinant and that's the one we're going to use for us to find uh, the value of x. So what we're going to do is we're going to write determinant, okay? Determinant of matrix A is equal to, then to find the determinant, we subtract um, the product of the trading diagonal from the product of leading diagonal. So therefore, going to multiply uh, the trading, the leading diagonal is uh, made by these elements, which is 2x minus y and negative 2. So I'm going to multiply negative 2 by uh, 2x minus 1, then minus, then we're going to subtract the product of the trading diagonal, which is 4 times 1. So minus 4 times 1. Okay. But once we have done this, then we're going to say what is the determinant given? The determinant given is negative 10. So where there is determinant of A, we're going to put negative 10 is equal to. So negative 4. So the negative 2 times 2x will give us negative 4x. Then negative 2 times negative 1 will give us positive 2, which will be minus 4 times 1 will give us negative 4, okay? All right, once we've done that, then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to now work on this one, the one I've underlined, uh, 2 minus 4, okay? So if, since we're going to work on that one, then I'm going to write negative 10 is equal to negative 4x. Then we find the difference of 2 and negative 4, which is negative 2. So positive 2 minus 4 give us negative 2. Then at this stage, I'm going to put like terms together. So I'm going to write negative 10. Then negative 2 close the equal sign and become plus. So it's going to be positive 2 is equal to 4x. Is equal to negative 4x. Okay. Then I'm going to find the sum of negative 2 and the sum of negative 10 and 2, which is negative 8, which will be equal to negative 4x. Then I'm going to divide both sides by 4, by negative 4. Okay, I'm going to divide both sides by negative 4. Okay, so negative 8 divided by negative 4 will give us positive 2. Negative 8 divided by negative 4 will give us positive 2, which is equal to then negative 4x divided by negative 4 will give us x. So the value of x in that matrix is 2. 
So the value of x is 2. Now let's go to question 2, which is uh, to find the inverse of matrix A. So what we're going to do is we are going first to find the actual matrix of A, the actual matrix A. Okay, so we have found the value of x, so where there is x, we're going to replace with it the value we found. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite the matrix like this. Okay, so where there is x, I'm going to put 2. So you you pay attention to the matrix because I'm not going to draw a lot of uh, matrices, but I will just use the same one matrix. So where there is x, I'm going to put 2. So I'm going to write 2 like that. That means I'm going to multiply 2 by 2 will give me 4. Okay, will give me 4. Then 4 minus 1 will give me 3. Okay, then that is the actual matrix of A. Okay, that is the actual matrix of A. Now, once I found that the actual matrix of A, then I'm going to find the uh, inverse of matrix A. So I'm going to write matrix A. The inverse, matrix A inverse, the inverse of matrix A is equal to, okay, then I'm going to open bracket. Okay, before I open bracket, I'm going to write 1 over negative, negative 10. Okay, let me just push these numbers this side. Okay, so 1 over negative 10. So, then I'm going to open bracket. Remember, I just want to write the, the, the inverse of this matrix. So 1 over the determinant, which is negative 10. The determinant given is negative 10. In the statement is where the determinant is given, which is negative 10. So I've just quoted the determinant from the statement, which is negative 10. Uh, let me read through so that you can be able to see where negative 10 is. Given that the determinant of the matrix A is equal to, uh, then that is the matrix given, uh, is negative 10. So that negative 10 is the one I've brought here. So 1 over the determinant of this matrix, which is negative 10, then open bracket. So what I'm going to write in the bracket, I'm going to write the adjoint. Of this given matrix if you don't know how to find the adjoint please check on our playlist on our YouTube channel you find a video where we talked about uh, lighting a adjoint of the given matrix okay so what I'm going to do is um, <coughs> the trail the leading diagonal will change uh, the reading diagonals will change the elements of the reading diagonals will change their position they will swap the position that means negative 2 will be where neg where 3 is and 3 will come where negative 2 is so it will be like this the where there is 3 I'll put negative 2 and where there is negative 2 there will be 3 okay once I've done that then uh, these two numbers, which is the trading numbers, 4 and 1, uh, if it, they will change their signs, if it's a positive, it will become a negative, and the negative will become a positive. Now, since we have got 4 down here, 4 is a positive, so it will become a negative, and 1 there on top is a positive, so it will become a negative, and we close. Now, that is the inverse of matrix A. Okay, if you have got questions, please you can ask in the comment section or if you want to more clarification, you can check on the video on a, our playlist. We have a video which is called Inverse of a Matrix where we explained this in details. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Let's go to the next question.